Hello and welcome to DDoCast episode 475, recorded live on Sunday, June 4th. I'm your host, Patrick. With me this week, we have returning uh, Strim Tom. Hey, everybody. What's up? Yeah, welcome back. Nice to see you, have you back in the... And uh, you just uh, hit a milestone on Twitch, right? That's right. I am a brand new Twitch affiliate for DDO, so when I stream that cool game... Uh, if you're watching, you can like go ahead and do the cheering stuff, a little emote and chat. It's really cool and exciting. Hopefully, a, a first step into a bigger step. But you know, we take things every bit at a time. But it is exciting. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Makes you feel legitimate, you know. Sure. I saw that pop up, and I, didn't, I haven't had a chance to research what that means, so I haven't done it yet. Mm. Uh, but I might do it later. Um, in any case, the screenshot of the week. This comes from uh, EMF poses with his maker in the 318th screenshot of the week. Um, if you're wondering how you can get such a nice docile screenshot of the Lord of Blades, who is usually very actively trying to like take your head off or swat you across the room, uh, this is from the Creation Forge when you make a Blade Forge character. Uh, so if you make an iconic character, you have a different starting area uh, than the airship or Corthos. Uh, but this comes from Propane, uh, who was one of our guests occasionally. Uh, so, nice screenshot. Uh, it's a beautiful area, too. Uh, Lord of Blades, the the quest, is one of the most beautiful raid areas, I think, that you're going to find. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's super yeah. cool. Uh, we like to talk about Dungeons & Dragons online nearly every weekend. You can watch us through Twitch, YouTube, the DDO forums, iTunes, or from our website at ddocast.com. DDOcast is hosted by Cyber Ears, the awesome podcast hosting network. Shows are usually available... Uh, in a few days of recording. The next show will probably be next Sunday. Uh, you can stay updated by following us on our social media pages or our website, ditocast.com, with our calendar. On the podcast this week, we got uh, a little bit of game news. We got a sneak preview of cleric changes. Uh, some of the, the stuff that's coming to the clerics, so we'll talk about that. Our main discussion is going to be on quivers and rune arms. Uh, and I can guarantee you that this show will be shorter than last week's show. Because the topic will be a lot shorter. It's just a little shorter, I think. Yeah. Um, just from lack of things to be able to talk about. Uh, but this mm-hmm. will finish our series um, on gear. Uh, we've gone through each of the slots. Uh, but I guess we could go through the cosmetic slots, although that has far less of an impact in the gameplay. Um, but it, I think it's also an area where there's a lot more discussion to be had about top-tier cosmetics. <laughs> That's fair. Um, although, have, what what do you define as a top tier cosmetics? Because they're well, just cosmetic, right? Well, you you got to think about it though, right? You know, we got uh, we got dungeons that really test out your top tier skills and stats. Um, so that's why we're we're gonna have to start up the annual DDO fashion show, and really, that that's when we can really start breaking down the cosmetics and how they look. People do yep. actually do fashion shows um, occasionally. There mm. there have been several. I think the High Lords of Milk here uh, have one every year around. Ooh, I want to say it's around Halloween, but I'm not positive. It's on that. a costume contest, yeah. Yeah, they do they do a costume contest, which is kind of fun. Uh, mm. In any case, we're gonna actually talk about runes, rune arms, and quivers. Uh, we'll start by talking about quivers. Um, and you counted how many there are, how many named the, quivers there are, and there are how yeah. many? Four named quivers. Yeah. So. And one, you know, one of them does have an epic version. Mm-hmm. So it's almost uh, two of like them, the, actually. Do two of them have epic versions? Mm-hmm. So there's three. Actually, no. Technically, if you count the quiver of poison, it quiver of poison technically has six versions. It's true. So we can we can say that there's actually I think twelve <laughs> quivers, but <laughs> I don't want to go that far. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a stretch. Um, so let's talk about the different quivers. Um, First off, I think we should mention that if you get House D favor, you can purchase quivers. There's nothing on them. They just hold arrows. Uh, but holding arrows is, in and of itself, uh, pretty nice. Mm-hmm. So, And if you get the, just the first tier of um, House D favor, not only do you get some returning arrows, and, or at least they have a percent chance to return, so you get better ammunition, uh, but you can get a just a basic quiver. Uh, they Quivers kind of come in two varieties. There's wide quivers and thin quivers. Thin quivers can hold a larger number of one arrow, but they 
They can only hold three sets. Mm-hmm. Wide quivers can hold fewer of each type, but can hold more of them. Even if you're not going to be a range character, I would recommend that you get the 75 house D favor at some point, uh, which is not too terribly difficult, and get a wide quiver and set it on auto gather because it will save six slots for you uh, in terms of how when you're just picking up arrows and, and random stuff like that. Uh, you can actually then uh, you can buy quivers from the store as well that have a larger capacity uh, or you can get more house D favor uh, and get uh, actually I don't know if you can get a larger I don't quiver? think there's a store by quiver. I'm looking at the the wiki and it, it has some that you can get from the store. Um, and then the you, store? Yeah. Uh, you can also actually apparently oh, yeah. buy yep. uh, buy quivers from the Heimer and Chain uh, and get some of the little. But the the you can get a large quiver from House D, which is ten slots, not six slots. So it'll hold more pieces of ammunition. Uh, so I just, I, I recommend that. It's, you're probably going to get 75 house D favor if you're doing heroics. Uh, it's not terribly hard to get. There's a lot of low level house D quests. Uh, and it's just kind of nice to have, I mean, it, it goes in your quiver slot, which you can only put quivers in. And like we said, there's not many quivers in the game. No. Uh, and you put, set it on auto gather and it just collects ammunition as it, as it comes in. And if you see that you've got one in your inventory, then you know it's full. You empty it out, sell them all, and start over. It's great. I do actually recommend highly getting a quiver just for the reason, no matter what you're playing. Um, sometimes you'll notice when monsters hit you, they'll break the stuff in your inventory. Like, oh, this ooze destroyed like a wand or something. That really sucks. If you actually have arrows equipped, it'll destroy your arrows first. So by just having a quiver on, even if it's filled with garbage arrows and you would never use ranged weapons, it'll prevent like you know 20 of your resurrection scrolls and you know almost like 50,000 plats getting destroyed because an ooze touched you which is a nice little hack as well mm-hmm. uh, so let's talk about the actual named quivers uh, and there's not really a reason to talk about our favorites or or the best in slot we can just talk about all of them because there's so we can literally talk we can break down every single one um, so the quiver of alacrity mm-hmm. uh, which is probably the hardest one to get that would be my estimation. Uh, the base ver, the heroic version, comes from the Ascension Chamber, uh, which I think has a the Ascension Chamber has somewhat of a low drop rate. Anyways, it's not as low as Mark of Death, but it's a it's a it's not exactly a high drop rate. And no, it's very rare. It's not exactly a quest that's on a normal circuit, <laughs> daily circuit run or weekly circuit run for most people. Um, the flagging is difficult. Well, it's not difficult. It's just uh, involved. Yeah, exactly. It's mostly just tedious. Yeah. Because you have to get lucky with drops to flag. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't changed that yet, actually. Um, I was expecting them to change that when we got uh, Mark of Death, and they didn't. I was a little surprised. In any case, uh, so the heroic version uh, has some pretty nice things for, going for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has range likely 10%, so if you're ranging, that's great. Uh it has striding 30% on a quiver, which, again, you can't do anything with a quiver other than put a quiver in it, and there's so mm-hmm. few choices. So this is actually kind of a really nice item, even if you're not a range character, because you can put your striding in, striding 30% in here. Oh, and w- did we mention it has no minimum level? Yeah, I've never understood why it has no minimum level, but I'm not going to complain. The fact that this item, you just, you're level one, you make your character, boom, you slap on the quiver, and you've got full move speed and all the quests you want to do. Yeah. It's just a great, it's just a great pickup. The, there may not, I would put forth that this may be the best piece of Twink TR gear in the game. Striding 30 at level one. Yeah, movement speed is pretty much the most important factor when it determines leveling speed. I mean, that's just, it's fantastic. It's just a great item. Especially if you're lazy like me and don't like chucking haste pots all the time. <laughs> I mean, you probably should still be doing that because you'd be getting more attack speed, but, you know. Unless you got one of those old clickies of, like, four uses of um, Expedition's Retreat. 
five uses. Yeah. Well, you can. There's even a new one that they're uh, not new, but it's current that you can get anger step that has two clickies. But yeah. Yeah. Th- this was one of those funny items that, I mean, when it came out, it was like the only quiver in the game, I think. Uh, and range characters couldn't get it because everyone wanted the the thirty percent. Now you have to upgrade. With, now you have to upgrade it with a seal of the storm weaver, or sorry, seal of the black, black, black abbot, uh, mm-hmm. which you can get in the raid, which actually drops okay if you can run the raid, uh, or if you get tome or um, let's see, the shield pieces, you can turn those in as well, mm-hmm. uh, and get a, a seal. So it's not terribly difficult to get a seal just from the number of tome and shield pieces that are kind of floating around these days that. Uh, don't tend to get used. There you go. Uh, I think that kind of covers that one pretty pretty well. Mm-hmm. The epic quiver of alacrity comes from Mark of Death. Uh, it has, uh, again, it's, you're going to get the a 30% bonus to movement speed. It's the newer version of striding and, and alacrity combined. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's range speed 30, or range speed 15. So you get 13 movement speed, 15. Uh, to attack speed, which is great. Uh, double shot, 8%. Like it. Insightful sneak attack bonus, so you get plus 4 to your attacks and plus 6 to your insight bonus uh, for insight attack and insight to damage uh, for a sneak attack, even if you're not a rogue. Uh, which, uh, take note, because if you are a deep wood sniper uh, and you go, I think the capstone one is the one that says that you have no... Uh, yep. There's no, no range, range in your sneak attack. Yeah, yep. and even the the other cores as you're going up there uh, increase that range, so that helps there. Stealth strike uh, reduces your threat by 15% for ranged attacks, uh, which is generally considered good for ranged. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure someone has a ranged tank build somewhere, <laughs> but it's not exactly a mainstream build. Usually nope. they don't want. The downside to this is it has concentration minus 50. Yeah, Which, so you'd, you'd, if you're playing like a muncher or something, you don't want to yeah. play this. You don't you, you do not want to equip this item. But the it's a really good combination of stats. The attack speed's just really good. Sneak attack is just very very strong. It's always going to give you that extra little bit of damage when you don't expect it. And double shot. Um, if it again, it's if it wasn't so difficult to come by, it would be a fantastic item. The the difficulty being getting people to actually go and do Mark of Death, a not quite so commonly run raid. But now, given I mean, it, it, yeah. When it was when it came out, people were running it a lot. Oh, absolutely. Now the the drop rate was terrible. So what ended up happening is people generally just started doing, just going for twenty completions and mostly running normal. Mm-hmm. Um, if they could do hard or elite and power th- and just cruise through it anyways, then you know you'd see groups doing that. But mostly people were just going for twenty runs. So. The last really nice quality about this quiver I want to touch on is that it has, uh, you can hold three different types of arrows, which isn't very many, but it holds 4,500 of each type of arrow. So if you happen to fill this quiver up with Deneath sturdy arrows and Deneath plus two sturdy arrows and Deneath plus four sturdy arrows, you probably wouldn't have to refill this for a good... A year? You know, two months. <laughs> it's, uh... It, yeah, that's a lot of ammunition. Uh, now, if you're a ranger, you can just, like, make your own ammunition. But, mm-hmm. uh... Rogues, rogue mechanic, are which is are pretty popular. Uh, you know, you get those returning arrows, and then you get that enhancement that increases the cha- the was it fletching? I think it is the, the fletching, eighty percent returning. Yeah, I mean, you you may never run out. Yep. The only time you would actually really need this high quantity of arrows is if you're playing a class which doesn't have the ability to craft its own things, such as one of those builds that uses um, crossbows with ranger, because um, that doesn't work. Uh, or you could just go but, with bolts with a Wakanda bolt scroll too. But. Yeah. Uh, ammunition is less of a, a problem in today's world, but yeah. if you need ammunition capacity, there you go. All right, uh, which one do you want to talk about next? What you pick? Uh, I'm going to say the next one is probably the most interesting quiver in the game, which is the quivering quiver. So the quivering quiver is it's like a regular quiver in that it holds ten different types of arrows. And it holds 300 of each, so it's just a little bit better than your large, uh, your large Deneath quiver. Uh, but it has a special quality, which is arrow spitting, which is uh, every time you get hit, there's a chance that 
uh, arrow, 20 arrows of a random type will just pop into your inventory. Um, this, these are absolutely fantastic. Uh, one, it means that if you're just playing as a regular ranger, archer, that sort of thing, you've always got arrows on the go and you never know what you're going to get. But it's cool because they have different effects, like fire or shock, so they just give you more damage than your regular arrows. Um, but also, if you don't really read it too carefully and you just pick it and then put it on, uh, it fills up your inventory real fast. Um, <laughs> And then mid quest, you're like, why can't I loot anything? And there's just millions of arrows. It's a it's it's a really really great item. I I like the flavor. I like the idea behind it. It's not that great, but it's really fun. It, yeah, it and it fits the. Uh, it comes out of the Harbinger of Madness. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's is it just an end chain reward. It's an end chain reward. Yeah. yeah. So, it, but it is kind of a fun fun thing. Uh, this might be a little bit of a running theme here, but I mean, we could use more quivers. And it's nice to have a, a very flavorful quiver that you can just kind of mess around with uh, and see what you get. I mean, it, do, it would. Te- I think you can sell them too, right? It's like. Yep, you can you, sell the arrows. You, you can generate a little free plat if you need some need some plat uh, in that way. But I really like the idea of there being like uh, uh, more flavorful items like this. I mean, if you think of like items that you don't want to be flavorful, like your main hand weapon, that sort of thing. It's like, oh, this is the thing that you want to have the stats on it and stuff. But quiver is such like a. Most people are going to use it. It's not like, oh, it's the legendary quiver. It's the legendary bow. So you can have, like, goofy quivers that do all sorts of stuff. It would be kind of nice if, if they did another, like, flavorful quiver like this. If It would just give you, like, a temporary, like, 10-second buff <laughs> so it wasn't filling up your inventory. Or maybe uh, I like filling up your inventory. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, all right. Uh, I will pick the Dynast- Dynamistic Quiver, if I can pronounce it. Uh, which comes out of Grim and Bear. This one also has heroic and epic versions. The Quiver and Quiver is only heroic. Uh, there is sadly no uh, epic version of, uh, a legendary version of the Harbinger of Madness chain. No. But uh, this one's pretty basic. Uh, it gives you double shot and range power. And if you're ranging, these are great things to have. Uh, 8% double shot, 4 range power. Uh, there's some other places you can get. It's, it's not the best Quiver that you can find, uh, but it's pretty pretty solid. I would I would actually argue that it's the best quiver. Um, simply because... If you don't need concentration, I think the, epic, the quiver, epic quiver of alacrity is better. Yes, but this one gives ranged power. Sure. So, I don't know. I think it's, it's really hard to say. That, and the thing is the... Actually, no, I wouldn't say it's the, the... I think you're right. I think it's not so much the best quiver, but I think this is in most cases the best quiver because the odds that you're going to get this quiver are pretty pretty good because you just have to go run Grim and Barret. But the Mark of Death spam, you know, you might... You, it's hard enough to get 20 groups of Mark of Death to put together, so... Although I think uh, Draculetta from DU Players News ran this, like, for months on end trying to get this quiver. The Dynamistic one? <laughs> yeah. I got it my first run. <laughs> Sorry, Drag. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's still it it has a, the same double shot. Uh, I actually on my my ranger, uh, I use the epic quiver alacrity mm-hmm. one because I don't need concentration because it's not a muncher. Um, and two, I get range power from another item. So there's there are places where you can get range power uh, elsewhere. So mm-hmm. uh, doesn't really sure. fit as much in. Uh, I guess it leaves the uh, quiver of poison. Which is probably by far the easiest one of these quivers. Well, I guess the quivering quiver. No, it doesn't always show up though, does it? Nope, doesn't always show yeah. up. And the quiver of poison, it pretty much every time you do, um, was it? It's not foundation to discord. Or cry someone's going to drop one. Or cry for help. Someone's going to drop one. And uh, so it's bound to characters. So you can just dump it on the auction house. And you know what? It's just it's just a good quiver. Well, it's, it just adds a little bit of damage. Require now, so you can't dump it on the auction house anymore. Oh. Uh, you can also get it as a as uh, an end reward, it can be one of the end rewards for running the giant hold chain as well. Uh, but it, it adds poison damage uh, to your your range attacks. Uh, the elite epic version is 1d10, and then it kind of just steps down from there. To the one. So mm-hmm. um, in heroics, it's probably the, the one of the best ones. Well, I mean, there's not really many choices. <laughs> adding poison damage to your range attacks is Better than nothing, right? Oh man, it's just pretty good. Like I said, it's just extra damage. There's not a lot of stuff that's going to be poison. Uh, one thing I do want to mention before we move on to rune arms uh, with quivers is you can also put them in your inventory. 
so let's say you're a ranged character and you like this epic quiver of alacrity that you managed to get. Uh, you can still get a wide quiver and stick it in your just in your normal inventory and set it to auto gather, and it will still collect things for you. Mm -hmm. um, so it will still save save inventory space. So long story short, get a quiver, any quiver. Go get a quiver. A wide Come quiver, on, preferably if you're not a ranged character, and set it to auto gather. Uh, even even my character, my ranger who has uh, a couple of these quivers. I keep a wide quiver on on him, even though I'm I would usually use a thin quiver for for use, the using ammunition. But I keep a wide quiver to collect things just to save inventory space. So that's a little trick. Mm -hmm. All right, there's quivers. That's quivers. Let's talk about rune arms. There's a few more of them. <laughs> yep, and rune arms are also a much more interesting item, whereas quivers just kind of are a place to put arrows. Uh, rune arms are an entirely different mechanic, a different way to actually do stuff with your character. Now, it's granted it's specific to artificers, but it's not attacking, it's not shooting a bow, it's not casting a spell, it's not even blasting like a warlock. It's got a whole different mechanics and system. Very interesting, very interesting item. I'm a huge fan of rune arms. I'm kind of hoping that uh, if they ever make a an artificer-themed Epic Destiny, that, like, monks get... Like, the Grandmaster gives you the... the uh, Unarmed attacking. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that if there's a, a artificer based epic destiny, it gives you rune arms. I would love that. That would be very cool. It'd be just kind of a fun way to open things up there. There's not a lot of rune arms in the game. Um, you can't just make one from craft. Like there, there's no random ones. Although yeah. it'd be nice if they could get some random ones. But there's some tech that's kind of involved. So I think is why that doesn't happen. However, mm -hmm. there's a, a fairly decent spread, uh, and there's a lot of choices. Uh, I don't know. How should we do this? Should we just start at... I'm kind of thinking maybe we should start at level 1 and kind of... Oh. Well, do you want to talk about your... Or... Do you have a favorite rune arm? Well, my favorite ones are the the ones that are higher level, right? Um, mm. I mean, I could talk about some of my, my more favorite ones, but I think I want to take... We'll do a little bit of departure we normally do because we normally mm -hmm. when we're talking about stuff is is talk about our favorites and, and best and slot stuff. Uh, because rune arms are kind of integral to what artificers are doing uh, generally, and because you can only find named ones, that's the only way to get them. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll kind of start at level one and just kind of go down the list. Sure. So. As people are leveling, they can kind of get an idea of where you can go to get them. Uh, so you Absolutely. have one. Uh, I think you don't get the you don't get the the feat for rune arms till level two. Is that right? Yep, you get it level two is when you get unlock your uh, rune arms, which is a little funny. Uh, you can find some level ones, but you can't find any level two rune arms. Uh, go figure. Uh, <laughs> Classic DDO. It's, go figure. Um, so the way rune arms... Let's talk about how rune arms work a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you can... They have stuff on them like any other item. Mm -hmm. uh, they go in your offhand slot, so you can't wear a shield or use a two-handed weapon with them. Uh, but you can charge them and then shoot them. And there's enhancements that that increase how fast it charges. If you're moving, the charge decays. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can, you can kind of affect... Again, using enhancements, you can... Uh, change how that happens and, and how loud, how far down it decays and stuff like that. Um, there is when you get rune arm proficiencies, you can actually you get a, a free feat that you can stick on your hotbars, uh, and if you click it on, it automatically charges your rune arm, uh, and mm -hmm. you can just fire it. Uh, I recommend if you're going to play rune arms that you remap the fire hotkey to something a little more convenient. I think it I can't remember what it defaults to, but I remember I. I change it to F because it's near yeah. near where my fingers are generally. Um, I changed mine to uh, one of my number keys just so it's easy to access. Yeah, it's it's a little. I don't remember where it is, but I think it's like on the right side of the keyboard. Yeah. I don't use that the default for that. In any case, uh, you want to be able to fire it, the, the the auto char it auto charges, but it won't auto fire for you even no, with, you just, with auto attack on. You still got to control all that stuff. Um, um, Rune arms are also interesting because they they allow you to use a charged attack, so it gives you a little like uh, 
piece of UI element that goes above your character, which shows you how much you're charging and when to use it. Um, but while you're using a rune arm, they also slow you down just a little bit. You can avoid that with some artificer enhancements, but they do start to slow you down. Um, and then after you fire your rune arm, depending on how you charge it up, it gets more damage. Uh, but more, it's not just more damage. It's exponentially more damage per charge gear. It actually has a different scaling mechanic, which you can read how the damage increases on each individual page. Um, and then finally, if you happen to be an Artificer or a Kanath Crafter yourself, I guess you have to be an Artificer, but if you are a Kanath Crafter, um, there was a recent change made to Rune Arms where uh, a lot, some of them are craftable, but almost all Rune Arms are deconstructable. So you can take your Rune Arm and put it into um, the crafting device and deconstruct it. This will take away some of the effects of the Rune Arm and allow you to craft onto it as though it's just an open slot. And Rune Arms are the absolute best crafting slot right before Trinket, because they can take almost anything. So they're very, very useful in that regard. Do they do they craft after Trinket, or is it, they have their own? They have those? their own, okay. but it's pretty much anything damage or defense-based, as well as all the stats. It's not every effect in the game, but it's almost every effect in the game, and they're very versatile in what can go in a prefix and a suffix. Yeah, so you can use some fun things with them. Mm. Uh, although you're not... You're, they generally come with a fair number of things, so you, you may not be able to replace as much stuff. But in any case... Uh, let's have some fun with, uh, with rune arms. So, level one, uh, well, well, actually, the other thing we should mention about rune arms is their attack, their, their charge shot, uh, it's worth paying attention to how it shoots. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of them will shoot in a straight line, some of them will fan out and then reconverge at a point, uh, but they can be blocked by other things. Um, so if it's one of the ones that fans out, then... You know, if you're in a tight space, you might lose the outer shots, so which you'll be doing less damage because you won't be hitting it as much. Um, yeah. Some and you know the the flamey one, the ones that do like a fireball, you can use to break things. Uh, actually, you do it with a couple of them. Uh, but just kind of pay attention to how it shoots. Um, they shoot different things as well, but you know, like different elemental types. Uh, Rune arms are very, very complicated. I think we'll probably spend more time talking about the individual effects and which ones we think are the most useful. Um, but if you actually want a very in-depth look at most of the rune arms in the game, I actually do have a up-to-date guide on the DDO forums uh, that I'll link in chat here, which does go through and details rune arms, what they're used for, and how you can mo make the most out of them. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so level one, uh, there's two choices. Uh, you can get the Flame Warden from Lost Seekers, which is a fire one. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't really mention, but most of these also imbue your main weapon with damage according to uh, what type of damage they do. Uh, there's also Thought Spike, which you get out of Redemption. There's not really a whole lot to write home about <laughs> on these. Nope. Uh, one does fire, one does force. Uh, the fire one is helpful if you're breaking a lot of boxes. Uh, it's actually, it's that's a fire, fire blast. Oh, it doesn't it? fireball. Yeah, so ah. it looks like a scorch. Um, it's much better than Thought Spike. Thought Spike has a habit of missing the uh, the force shot. They kind of sometimes spiral out around and stuff like that. But uh, the fire blast, it's a frontal AOE, which at low level is great. Think of it like a burning hands kind of effect. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. At level three, you get uh, you can get Another couple options. Uh, Flicker comes out of Seal of Chanticore. It's electrical based. Uh, it does an electrical lash, which uh, I'm not sure which one what that does anymore. It, it's actually the same thing as the uh, fire blast. It's just a frontal just cone electrical. of electric. Uh, and again, it doesn't really do a whole lot of interesting things. Uh, I mean, they, nope. these have other effects on them, but it's like saves and power and stuff like that. Um, candlelight is pretty useful. Uh, as you get mm -hmm. low levels. Uh, it comes from catacombs, uh, and it does light spirals, which is going to hit some undead. It mm -hmm. does light damage, which is one of the rarer types. Yeah, light damage is not very common. Uh, but so that can be pretty nice. Uh, level 5, uh, <laughs> you have uh, two choices, one of which you can actually find in the game, and one of which you have to buy from the store. Uh they both do cold. The one that you can find comes from uh, the Maleficent Cabal, which is Carnival, House Beat Carnival. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just to get a little better on what it can do in that it has cold absorption. Uh, so you get 10% cold absorption, which can be a little bit more useful than some of these other things that are on these. Uh, and it does cold bolts, 
which I think is a, it's a straight line shot, right? It's just a straight line shot. So, uh, I have not ever bought any of them from the store. I'm guessing you haven't either. I haven't bought any of them from the store. The thing is, the store-bought root arms mimic a lot what the root arms already in the game do. So unless you're really strapped for one, a lot of the ones in here come from free-to-play quests as well. So. Yeah, the the uh, Cabal one, I think, is the first... Well, Catacombs and the Carnival are not free-to-play, but uh, they're good quests. Mm -hmm. Good good packs by... Especially... Um, uh, what's it? The Catacombs is uh, low level, mm -hmm. but uh, you have to buy it. But it's a lot of quests, and it gets run pretty frequently. It's a good... Got a lot of stuff at level 3. Yeah, Catacombs is very, very, very popular. A good big note about the level 5 rune arms, too, is that most of them, with the exception of one, uh, have a higher charge tier. So rune arms can only charge up to a certain tier based right. on the level of the rune arm. It goes up to 5 when you get later, but... Um, most all these ones can charge up to tier three, which just means they get any extra level of power. But then, fortunately, the rune arm from uh, Tango Root, great rune arm, Kyber's Fury. It's got the exploding fire shot, so it basically it's the fireball you were talking about. Yeah. Um, you get it from the end reward of that chain, and it gives fortification, which is just great at low levels, especially for level five. Seventy-five but, percent. Yep, but it only charges up to tier two, so it's not as good as some of the other rooms at that level. Yeah. Um, other ones you can get at level five. Uh, this is the Chimera's Breath out of Sentinels of Stormreach. So you notice there's a theme here. These are end reports for chains. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one's electrical. Uh, it's electrical blast as opposed to the uh, the lashing one. So it does a little gets a little farther. This one's kind of neat in that it gives you uh, proficiency with bastard swords. <laughs> yes, actually, it's one of the coolest rune arms. This is one of my favorites. Um, I like to play melee artificer, and I like to use single weapon fighting with bastard swords. And if you don't have the, if you're if you don't have the stat points to get uh, Bastard Sword proficiency, you can actually use this Rune Arm, and it overtakes that and lets you do that. Plus, Electrical Blast is just frontal AoE. It's just good. Well, it, you know, you can save the the feet until taking it later, right? For Bastard exactly. Sword, so. Uh, so you talked about the Splinter Skull. There's also uh, Stranati's Hand Cannon, uh, which I think was mentioned in our chat room. Uh, it was. Too. Yeah, is. It's the greatest barn on. Um, it's it's really really good. Um, it has one of the it's there there are a lot of very generic uh, effects on rune arms, but exploding cannon shot is one of the more interesting ones. Um, it's basically it acts like meteor swarm. It does both parts fire and physical damage, which as a result means it scales double. Uh, because each one does the same damage, um, and so you do need fire and force spell power to make it work. Uh, but it basically does double the damage of all the other rune arms. So it's really, really good. And you'll probably use it almost all the way up to level 20 if you have that one. We uh, we probably should have mentioned that uh, you can get... Your spell power will actually affect the damage output on these things. So Yes. Uh, let's see. Other than the store ones, I think that brings us to level 7. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, you can get the Devourer's Hunger out of Cult of Six. Which is kind of a little funny because Cult of Six is like a level ten. The end quest is like level ten. It's level ten. It's level seven. It's yeah. a lot of a lot of quest run. Um, this one actually starts giving you some some spell power with the associated <laughs> rune arm. So, uh, and some false life. Uh, it does cold damage. Uh, mm -hmm. We did, we we kind of went away from the favorites, and we we're going to talk about that. But the uh, um. Generally speaking, I just kind of use whatever I can find, like whichever ones I have, right? Because generally mm -hmm. I only have like one of each. Uh, like, I mean, I have all of them because they're, they're bound to account and stuff like that. I kind of just throw them on there and, and use whichever one seems to work best at the time, right? Mm -hmm. At this level. Um, the pea shooter is kind of the first one that I, uh, I really kind of generally start using more. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Well, it's got better single target damage because of the acid shot, right? Yeah. So you get much better single target damage, which is kind of one of the things that artificers want more than other classes. Um, and it's it's like it's, it's just a it's got potency as well, which just helps you with all your spells, mm -hmm. including repairing as well if you just need that. So. Yeah. And at level seven, you're kind of looking to generally up. 
Uh, another thing that we, we didn't talk about too is the save. Like, pay attention to the saves on some of these, because um, sometimes they're reflex, mm-hmm. um, and sometimes they don't have a save, which can really affect the damage output that you're doing. Particularly if you start finding things that have evasion, uh, and you get higher levels. Um, see, the other one you can get is the the Coronach, which comes out of Delara's tomb. Uh, and again, this is kind of a nice one uh, in that it does light damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it has the Karnak effect, uh, which is kind of fun. Yep. Stuns undead whenever you roll a Vorpal. So it's it's really good. Karnak is one of the weapons or rune arms that is really good if you just mostly use your weapon as opposed to the spells or the rune arm because you're not too worried about the light spirals effect. But life shield is, man, did you... It's like, well, every time you get hit, you have a chance to get a little bit of temporary hit points. So it's it's just a good item to have, even if you don't use rune arms, like the actual effect of the rune arm. Yeah, great point. Um, all right, with level nine, we get a little a little fun here. Um, you can there's a raid rune arm from uh, Vault of Night or Plane of Night, uh, and it's the Disciplinator. It's an electrical one. It has smiting weapons on it. Yes, it's very, very, very powerful. Which is pretty awesome at level nine. <laughs> Uh, now you have to actually run this, run the raid, and, and get it right. So they can be a little harder to get. You may not have it your first time around, but mm-hmm. uh, and that applies to your your weapons. It's not the actual shot of the rune arm. It it puts smiting on your weapons, which is pretty slick. Yeah, it's really good, especially if you have like a repeating crossbow or something. Then you every time you use a burst, that's three chances to roll a twenty. And when you roll a twenty, bye bye constructs. Just get them out of there. And in a similar vein, out of uh, Wizard King, so and this one's a lot easier to get. It also drops on uh, on Epic. Uh, the Hand of the Tombs, uh, mm-hmm. which is a fire one and has disrupting weapons and puts disrupting on all of your weapons. Uh, also at level nine, so that can be pretty handy. Uh, these two are nice in that uh, you can swap them in as needed uh, for what you're fighting. Mm-hmm. If I'm not fighting one of those things. I generally go with Recoil, which comes out of uh, Threnel, uh, which is a Force 1, has Impulse plus 40, uh, 54 on it, um, and Anathema, which I don't remember what that, that does off the top of my head. It doesn't have a link. No. I'll read it. Anathema increases all threat generated by spells by 25%, just yeah. like Coil of L. That makes sense. Um, but it's a Force shot, and again, the, the Force ones generally don't have a reflex save, uh, whereas the elemental ones generally, or at least fire and uh, fire electrical and electrical tend to have reflex saves, so it reduces mm-hmm. your damage. The force ones generally don't. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, moving right along. Uh, trial by fire, out of attack on Stormreach. Uh, it does fire, uh, fire damage. Uh, it gives you vitality, which is kind of nice. Um, Titan's Fist, which is probably the only rune arm in the game that I don't have. <laughs> Let's all run the Titan Raid, everybody. I why. Sparring about that Titan's Fist. Yeah. I mean, if you can get it, it's kind of nice. It has Intelligence 6 on it and Kinetic Lore, but you got to run the Titan Raid and get it to drop in the Titan Raid. So. The nice thing is it has the old Kinetic Lore, so it does 15% to level 11, which is really, really good. Um, but, again, like, got to go run Titan, so I don't, don't plan on doing that anytime soon. Yeah. Unfortunately, because it's kind of a fun, fun quest and raid. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, and this gets us to Tor at level thirteen, and each dragon has a rune arm. Uh, and like many of the things that, uh, actually, no, these ones don't have uh, different levels. They don't. Right? Uh, but they do. They have an epic version. Uh, but you can get a a a cold and acid and an electrical one out of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the epic versions, I actually I keep on my character. Um, they're not generally a rune arm that I'm using, but I, I actually keep one of each element uh, on my character uh, just as a swap-in, as well mm-hmm. as I actually keep the ones that have disrupting and smiting. I don't know why I still do that, because in epic levels it's probably not very... <laughs> hey, man, more rune arms, the better. More yeah, but my my bar or my uh, artificer needs more hot bar space. <laughs> He's got a lot of hot bars that's going on. Um, other than that, I don't know. If there's anything really worth mentioning on 
on the ones out of the, the dragons and tor. Realistically, the arcing sky is going to be the best one. It's got the area of effect, and it also gives you dodge, which is generally pretty useful. The other two rune arms, while the freezing ice guard from Chill Winter is kind of nice, the attack bonus doesn't stack with any attack bonus items from Turmoil Within, so you're probably going to end up using Arcane Sky if you're going to use any of those rune arms. Uh, the other one you get at level 13 is the Arm of the Archons, uh, which is... <laughs> this is a very, very good yes, rune arm, by the way. It is a very good rune arm. The heroic version uh, has Impulse... 72 on it. So, I mean, that's plus 72% damage with the rune armor that it is. Uh, it's mm -hmm. great. Uh, we'll talk about the legendary version uh, later. It also has sheltering, although uh, it's just sheltering plus 3. Uh, and if you're not familiar with how PRR and MRR works, uh, at best, plus 1 of that is like 0.62% damage reduction. Mm -hmm. Now, is you get more, obviously you can get it keeps going up, but each point scales scales your percent increase down a little bit. But uh, so plus three is not really anything to write home about. But I mean, if you got <laughs> it's on there, so woohoo! Well, the item was released at the time when right before they started making a lot of PRR yeah items and a lot of good ones. Um, so it was pretty good at the time. The most important thing about Arm of the Archons is that it does not work as intended. It says maximum charge tier 4, which is really correct. But if you actually hold down the button, you'll find it continues to charge all the way up to tier 5. Um, this rune arm is the most damaged rune arm you can get in Heroics because it does that. Uh, so at level 13, when you slap it on, you charge up to tier 5 with just the spell power from Impulse 72. If you're playing a pure Artificer, uh, you're hitting guys for about 2,000 damage at a full charge. Yeah. Which is a very, it makes it a very interesting effect because you can kind of be like, oh, there's a boss. As long as you can stand there and charge, but boom, you're walking to the next room. So the next one at level 14 is the Whirling Wards. And this is one of my favorites. If for no other reason than that the charged shot shoots books, <laughs> like literally throws books, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, this comes out of the Tower of Frost. It has a legendary version we'll talk about as well. Um, mm -hmm. But this one, this one's actually pretty good. You get insightful spell resistance eleven, quality magic sheltering four, quality potency thirteen, concentration seven, and a green slot. Mm -hmm. Charges to tier five. That's yeah, it's pretty a, dang good. It's a very very good rune arm, especially at the at these levels. So, well, the nice thing is this bludgeoning shot, uh, which means it pretty much ignores, and it's also bludgeoning four. Uh, so it does lots of extra damage. Um, as well, it pretty much ignores almost all damage reduction, and it affects uh, constructs fully. Yeah. Whereas uh, all the magic rune arms do not. They you do half damage. Uh, so, yeah, one of the best heroic rune arms. I think it's better than the one from Arm of the Archons, personally. But part of that, too, is tainted by the fact that it throws books as opposed to <laughs> <laughs> essentially magic missiles. <laughs> I'm going to take you to school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Tear of Splendor, uh, this one comes out of the gar Garamol chest in Subterrain, uh, which is not as popular of a loot run as it used to be. No. Uh, but it's not terribly difficult to, to do if you know how to get there. <laughs> That's kind of the trick. Uh, this is another light one. Uh, and this is actually, the rune arms start getting pretty good here. Uh, this one has healing application 40, death block, uh, Tier of Splendor, which gives you silver damage reduction on all your weapons. Uh, and you have to be lawful to use it. Or, sorry, you can't be chaotic. If you're mm -hmm. chaotic and you use it, you get a negative level. But, uh, not too bad. Uh, the other one that you can get around this level is from Outbreak. It's Corruption of Nature. It's an acid one, uh, which is, is a pretty good one as well. It's got 84 corrosion and... 54 potency on it for the level 17 version. Uh, it also gives you natural armor, which you probably don't really care that much about. <laughs> probably not. But it's just it gives you corrosion, and it's a corrosion that item. Yeah. So that's just helpful. It, it starts to become fairly fairly common with these, actually. Yeah. Uh, they start doing at least their potency, uh, if not just general potency. Um, the Glorious Obscenity comes from Reign of Madness. Um... <laughs> Which, as you might expect, has a few things. It's, I don't know, it's not that good of a rune arm, I think. Cause it has it's really more, not. It has more penalties than anything else. It has, like, a bunch of penalties, and then it adds to all different stats. Yeah, I guess, I mean, enhanced I'll... spot. <laughs> all right. 
I like Spot. Spot's good. Do I need enhanced Spot? Eh, yeah, probably not. Maybe not. Seeker's okay, <laughs> but then it's like minus semi concentration. Yeah. Not a fan of it. Uh, Resplendence from Fashion Madness. Uh, again, Life Shield. We like that. It's light mm-hmm. one, which uh, fewer things are immune to light than uh, generally. Gives you ninety radiance, which is great for that. Uh, and it has, I mean, it has ghostly. That's kind of neat. So it's it's pretty good if you're gonna be fighting a lot of undead, mm-hmm. uh, stuff like that. Uh, all right, Tovin's hammer. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, Absolutely. It's a little harder to get because you have to run master artificer, and you have to if you want it to like really get the full benefit of it, you actually have to run master artificer and Lord of Blades and do the optionals to get the upgrade pieces for it, mm-hmm. uh, which is a bit of a uh, the optionals really aren't that hard. Uh, and when I say optional for Lord of Blades, uh, you have to mark the Lord of Blades uh, to mm-hmm. do it. Which, these days, is not really that hard to do. Uh, and the Master Archer um, optional is realistically kind of a joke optional. It's it's not difficult at all as long as you know where, that it's there. Um, but this is, it does good electric damage, has exceptional fortification, uh, has lightning strike weapons, which I've always been a fan of lightning strike. It's just satisfying to see that it's lightning strike. Cool. It's just cool. It's just cool. So, uh, and if you upgrade it, uh, it actually uh, will regenerate spell points uh, as you get hit, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it... Uh, much like a torque uh, from Demon Queen. So, which is pretty nice. The downside to this uh, and the reason why I, I like Lucid Dreams a little bit more, these are both level 19. Lucid Dreams comes out of Mind Sunder, so it's easier to get. Uh, it does force damage, and the shot is, again, the difference between Tovin's Hammer and Lucid Dreams. Tovin's Hammer has a reflex save on it. Shot, Lucid Dreams doesn't. Yeah, but the thing about Tovin's Hammer, this is one of the important things about high. there's uh, a lot of different types of shots. Electrical Storm is a very unique shot. It's only on two rune arms in the game, Tovin's Hammer and then St. Saint- Mirai's Fire, which we'll talk about later. But Electrical Storm is the highest area of effect damage from a rune arm. It fires effectively what looks like a ball lightning, and it works just like a ball lightning except it passes through targets. So if you have Electrical Storm, you can charge it to shoot three full, uh, full power ball lightnings that pass through targets. Uh, the amount of damage you can do with this thing is absurd, and if you can't get your hands on one, I highly recommend you do it. There's nothing faster for clearing through, you know, your epic dailies and stuff like that. This is this is a very very nice item to have. Yeah, and if you want to increase the save, it's evocation saves, I believe, right? It is all evocation. Yeah. So you can you can increase your saves and and reduce some of the the save penalty that you get there. Um, and you know it doesn't have the <laughs> the lucid dreams has a penalty to spell points, which is kind of a bit of a bummer as well. But it has Nightmare card. I mean, that's kind of fun, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Uh, and the old Spell Lore 6. <laughs> the the potency in Spell Lore on, on, that, on that one and Tobin's Hammer, because they're older, is not as good <laughs> as the newer ones, but that's what you get, I guess. Uh, the other one you can get is, is the Animus, which comes out of Devil's Assault, uh, which has banishing uh, weapons on it. Which is, it kind of matches, finishes out your set, right? You can have uh, Disruption, Smiting, and Banishing weapons. Well, it's level 19, which is where some of that stuff starts to become less useful. All right, uh, and that brings us to the epic ones, uh, which there's fewer of them. Uh, there's the level 21, uh, which at the archaic device comes out of Lost Thread, uh, or you can get it as an end reward uh, for Menace of the Under Arc Darkening Chain. Uh, I mean, it's not really anything to write home about, but it's level 20, uh, and it does force damage. <laughs> Yep, and it's uh, unbound, so you can you can get them on the auction house, that sort of thing. Uh, it's pretty easy to get, honestly. Yep. Um, there's the epic level of epic version of corruption of nature, which really just kind of increases what it already has, so corrosion and potency. It does add insightful intelligence, which is kind of nice. Uh, the epic versions of the ones from Try and Hold Tor, which. Uh, Again, I don't know. If there's really anything to write home about for them. Yeah, they're they're just good items. Yeah. They're just the same. They're exactly like the previous ones. They're just stronger. So, and the cold one uh, does have freezing ice guard, which is kind of nice. Mm. But uh, and that's a whole lot going on there. 
There's a three barrel cove one from Precious Cargo, St. Murray's Fire. Uh, which, this always, <laughs> I never understood why this one wasn't a fire damage one. It's electrical. Yeah, I I was assuming maybe it's because it's like, uh, you know, it's if you have an armament, it would be like a direct armament from an airship. And so it's it's it would have like the lightning as the fire or something. I could see but, that. Or there's or there's some lore thing that we're totally oblivious to, but which is uh, also highly likely. Yeah, I mean, it get, the nice thing here is it it gives you uh, spell lore and lightning lore and magnetism, so it, it does pretty good uh, for itself. Uh, it's also this, electrical storm, so yeah, that's the one that you were talking about earlier that that does a little bit uh, better damage than for good area damage. Again, there's a reflex save, but uh, that'll bring us to the uh, glass cannon. Which I think actually has more than just the level twenty four version. You can get it's this one comes out of Crystal Cove, so it's not always mm-hmm. available. Um it does the uh the exploded cannon shot, right? So it's it's doing fire and bludgeoning. And it gives you fire and bludgeoning on your weapon. Uh it's got good it's got impulse, it can go up be upgraded up to one twenty, so that's pretty good. Uh it does have a twenty five percent penalty to fortification, which is worth Yeah. It's not, it's, it it makes you a glass cannon. <laughs> It's not hard to overcome, but it's mm-hmm. worth noting. Uh, it's one of the few items that it's like, man, this is a really good item. Let's put a penalty on this one, and they did. <laughs> and it's it's thematic. I think I think this is just a very. When you read it, you're like, that makes sense. No, that's a cool item. Uh, the epic resplendence is a epic version f- for the one that comes from Fashion Madness, uh, which it really just increases the the radiance it's and, and basically the, the same item. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Epic Rolling Words, uh, again, one of my favorites, just because it's two books, and again, it basically just increases all the stuff that's on there. Um, it's uh, it's actually not as good as the heroic version, because a lot of those stats are kind of, you find them on other items around the same yeah. level. Um, but, but it, it is still a very books. good item. Exactly, it shoots books. I'm not going to complain that it shoots books. It's a, it still does that. Uh, the Epic Armor of the Archons, also a really good one. Uh, this one, is, it increases the Unpulse to 150. It has sheltering 30. Now, yeah. see, this is sheltering. So that's... Yeah. Also, it's immunity to fear. And, fear immunity uh, is very nice. <laughs> plus two quality magic resistance. Uh, so you get plus two quality bonus to your MRR. <laughs> Woohoo. Uh, I mean, it all adds up, right? But <laughs> it's just kind of a funny funny thing. Because uh, it doesn't really do that much for you. But, uh, so there you go. Uh, Knives of Eternal. Uh, this one comes out of Mark of Death. Uh, and I think it's probably one of the best ones you can get. I mean, there's only two more to talk about. Knives of Turtle. But this one goes out of Mark of Death. This one also has a unique shot and then it shoots knives. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, it, if you're familiar with uh, Wild Shot out of um, Shirati, the Epic Destiny Shirati, uh, it's the same kind of attack as that. Uh, it does... Uh, Pretty good damage. You get impulse 150. Uh, I don't. You can upgrade it. Uh, get some slots on there. Uh, it's also got kinetic lore, so it's uh, 22% uh, for your force physical on type, which this is. So you get plus 150 and plus 22% critical uh, for that rune arm, uh, which is really good. So. Oh yeah. Uh, again, it's market death, so you're you're probably gonna have to expect to run 20 runs to get this. But other than that. Unless- well, either that, I mean, not a lot of people play Artificer, so there might be somebody willing to give it to you if they drop it. Yeah, that's so. true. Uh, the one that's probably best in slot, and and one of my oh, favorites, by far. Um, Machination of Madness. Uh, this is a, a B shot, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Uh, so if you're familiar with running, this is from Legendary Hound of Zoriat. If you're familiar with running Hound of Zoriat and the B breath that the mom does, that Dizzy does, <laughs> it's kind of that. It gives you the B shot. It's pretty yeah. great. Well, and the thing to note about the, this B shot too is its damage over time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just do damage when it hits; it also does damage over time. And it uh, does a lot of damage when it hits too. Well, and its its charge rate is faster. Uh, it has a, it's the only rune arm that has uh, enhancement bonus to charge rate. It's got thirty percent bonus to that. One hundred fifty nine mm-hmm. impulse. Um, Repair Amplification? No, uh, Insightful Repair Amplification. It's the only item in the game that uh, has Insightful Repair Amplification. 
Uh, I didn't realize it was insightful because it doesn't actually say it's insightful <laughs> in the name. It just says repair application. But yeah, so it's insightful or repair application. Insightful evocation focus three. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's doing all great things. The only thing it doesn't have one is that uh, Knights Eternal has is kinetic lore. And in the grand scheme of things, kinetic lore is not that hard to find. Yep, you can grab kinetic lore off of a lot of different items. Uh, and this item, like you said, it's got a 30% faster charge rate, which is just absurd. It hits harder than all the other rooms. The damage over time effect actually scales with spell power and stacks up to 20 times. Yeah, it so, stack, the more times you hit, the, the higher it goes. So Yeah, and the, uh, this cannon as well, it doesn't say it. The B shot is actually different than other things. At charge level tier 5, it actually shoots three sets of Bs. So it actually does triple the damage of the knife shot um, on the base damage. So it's... And insightful evocation focus 3 is the best insightful evocation focus you can get if you're not using the uh, the staff. Which you won't be because you're using a root arm. Yeah, so, so this is this hands item down is really the good. best one that yeah, you're going to yeah, And it shoots bees. It shoots bees. It, it shoots bees. It's really, it's really important. It's like, not I remember... as cool as the books. The, the books just look... Uh, actually, I'm, I'm I probably know. overselling the books. Uh, See, here's the, the problem. Books the books are great, but I remember back like almost 10 years ago when I saw like the commercial for Bioshock and the dude shoots the bees out of his hand. I was like, man, I want to do that. But then it was super underwhelming. And now it's like, oh man, I also want to shoot bees out of a cannon. And then DDO is like, no, no, no. Bees are amazing. This is the best effect in the game. And yeah, it just makes me really happy. I love it. Yep. So there you go. That's we, we pretty much actually went through all of the quivers and root arms. <laughs> we did. Every single one, yep. <laughs> Which we didn't do for any of the other slots, because there's a lot more things in the slots. So, uh, Anything else you want to say about Crows and Runarms before we move on? Yeah. Um, I think if you haven't gotten the actual chance to play as a, an Artificer, I highly recommend you check it out, especially with... Artificer is one of the few classes that can use both Quivers and Runarms very effectively. Uh, so give it a shot. Um, and like I said, if you want a more in detailed and in-depth explanation into each of the individual rune arms, their mechanics and how they work, um, I, I did link a guide in here so you can you can check that out. Because um, there are a lot of yeah, there's a lot of uh, odd oddities when it comes to uh, rune arms and how they work. Um, but they're one of the more interesting aspects of DDO. So, and if you don't want to pay for Artificer, you can unlock it by getting House Kenneth favored. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 150, so if you can run the raids, that'll help. But the challenge is you probably you don't need to run challenges. Uh, I think if you do all of the quests, um, I'm trying to remember. I did this math a long time ago, but like if you do all the quests, and I think if you do the raids as well, on if you do the quests on elite, the raids on like maybe it was hard or something. I think you only have like two or three star of the challenges, so yeah. it's not terribly difficult to get the favor. You just gotta take the time to do it. Uh, so. And there's yep. some some of those challenges have um, heroic and epic versions, uh, and they give fa- favor for both, so you can run them all. Even more than that, some of the challenges are really really fun, yeah. and uh, if you just want to farm it out to get some five stars, if you happen to have access to the warlock class, make an iconic level fifteen, just warlock. Uh, if you're playing enlightened spirit, you don't even need items. You can do all of the challenges at level fifteen and five star them. Yep. I only know because that's what I do to farm it out. <laughs> Well, get... most of them. I I have never managed to five star any of the Cobalt oh. Island ones, but Cobalt Island, uh, you can do, just not the one with the um the Orthons. with the portals. Yeah. That I one's impossible. <laughs> to five star those. They're, those ones are the hardest ones. Probably yeah, the hardest sure. challenges in the game. Um, which is okay. Which is a little harder to do. Uh, let's see. So with that, let's do game news. Uh, it was a little bit of a fun game news. Uh, there were a couple of things that happened. Uh. So we talked last week about there was an issue with reincarnations. People were losing some gear. Uh, on Thursday, they brought the games down and added uh, a small game update. Uh, what it what they did was they put in additional monitoring into the game. So they're trying to investigate the lost items during the reincarnation process, uh, which they can't... It happens so infrequently. They have such a small sample size, they can't figure out what it's doing. Uh, they're also uh, not entirely sure if it's one of those things that... Uh, it, there's just too many things that they, they don't know what it mm-hmm. could be. It could be, like, weather, like, lightning strike. I think what Linnabelle said, like, it could be one of those things where, like, lightning strikes a data center or a place in between or something. Like, it's probably not that, but... Probably you know, not that, but... It's... 
there's so there's so little data that they're trying to they're not sure what it is. So they're trying to get more data so they can fix that so it doesn't happen to people because uh, it's pretty debilitating. Uh, and my understanding is that it, it doesn't just delete all of your stuff. Uh, it makes it so that they can't see what you had either to help replace it. So it makes it kind of doubly difficult. Yeah. I, uh, it's also insanely rare, though. So yes. it don't, if you're worried about it happening to you, it's very, very unlikely it's ha- going to happen to you. Of every single person I know, people who have done over 80 past lives, that sort of thing, I only know one guy that happened to him one time, and it didn't actually take away all his stuff. It just didn't load his past lives properly and his tomes. And then after relogging, it fixed it. So it's very, very, very rare. There is a guy in my my guild that lost everything that was in his actual inventory at the time of reincarnation, which was pretty pretty lousy. But that blows. Yeah, uh, and that's happened to more than one person. But it's, I think they only know of three people, three or four people. So it's a very, very small thing. Uh, so it's a possibility, but I wouldn't be afraid. I wouldn't stop reincarnating and being afraid of it. The the conventional wisdom is to log out of the game uh, while you're re- doing your reincarnation process. So mm-hmm. instead of just logging out, like like just exit and reboot the game. Um, and if you have connection issues that during that time frame, that's going to be a red flag. So uh, if you're streaming. Or, and downloading and doing a lot of stuff at the same time, it may not be the best time to reincarnate or put that stuff on pause. Right? So if you're watching Netflix and you have a, a virus scan going in the background <laughs> and you're downloading a movie, uh, not the best time to TR. Uh, so, uh, some other stuff. Uh, Little Bell uh, popped in uh, in... Uh, People were asking, does higher, do higher scrolls actually increase drop rates? Uh, she probably said, yes, higher scrolls do actually increase drop rates. Uh, she wasn't trying to be coy. She just wanted to make sure she could actually share that info before she... Uh... Now, they're not going to tell us how much. That's fine. Honestly, I don't think we need to know how much. It's just, it's it's hard when it's very difficult unless you want to run something like 30 times and make a table and figure out the actual, like, oh, increase this much percentage. But just knowing that in the game it's coded, yes, it does make it higher drop rates, then you might be tempted, I'm farming this item, let's go Reaper 4 this time instead, you know? Uh, there were some questions about, <laughs> there were some suggestions about how to balance out the uh, the stat bonuses from Wasteful Reincarnation. Uh, Steelstar jumped in and said, uh, to be clear, they don't have any long-term goals to make all of the stats gained from Wasteful Reincarnation even. They do want to keep a relatively even spread, so they're not looking to, say, introduce five strength, life, strength past life races in a row or anything. Uh, but they make no guarantees that there will be two of each before any particular attribute gains a third. It really depends on the race in question. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, now the fun stuff. Uh, they are looking to change Turn Undead and add domains to clerics. Uh, Woohoo! Uh, yes, lots of win. Before we start talking about this, some things to note. One, this is... Uh, the stuff that was shared by Cordovan and Linabel in a, a video uh, is stuff that they... It, it's coming from the... Like, they put it in front of the Players Council. This is not coming in Update 36. Some of this stuff has already changed. <laughs> so, not only will it change, it already has changed. Uh, and it's going to go through more iterations. So, this is a, an early look, first look, I think it gives some uh, some fun information here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, of course, we want to talk about some of this. Uh, and we may not go into as much detail as we sometimes do. Uh, but we'll go through some stuff. Uh, so turn undead. What's changing? So the philosophy behind this stuff is they want to, one, make it easier to understand, and two, make it less binary. Technically, right now it's it's got three effects, three possible effects. Um, mm-hmm. r- what happens right now when you turn undead? Uh, one of three things will happen. Nothing. You will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I forgot about how big that one is. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is probably the most common thing that people are are used to. Uh, there's also uh, the you can destroy undead outright. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the in between one is they cower. Um, 
and kind of huddle up. I don't know if it's actually a, an official stun and that it does double damage, but uh, it makes them helpless. But they stop attacking you. Now, if you want to go from back to pen and paper, right, that that uh, destroying undead is actually a, an uncommon thing that happens in pen and paper. Uh, in order to destroy them, you have to be at least five hit die above them. Uh, so it's hard to actually destroy undead that are at your level of fighting. It's it's mostly kind of a clear out the room kind of a thing. And there's a limit to how much you can turn, right? Turning is pretty complicated in pen and paper because you, you roll dice, it you go to a table that, that tells you how many hit dice worth of undead you can turn. Uh, yeah. If you it's... successfully turn an undead that is five hit dice lower than you, then it gets destroyed, otherwise it flees or cowers or does something like that. And the formula for determining how many hit dice you can do is based on your cleric level and your charisma and the time of day and what you had for lunch and, you know, all sorts of stuff. So it's, it, 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 gets, yeah, it's, yeah, it gets complex. Um, and in 3.5, um, turning on, I don't, I don't know which one you're referencing. In 3.5, three, five if you're Sun Domain... So you follow Palor or whatever the sun god is. But if you're sun domain, then you, instead of turning to fear them, you uh, kill them instantly. Um, as long as you just make the turn. Yeah. So. so there's... It's a complicated mechanic in pen and paper, too. Um, I was say, it's so complicated it's, that we're even discussing the same thing and we have different rules. Yeah. <laughs> and look, the, it, in pen and paper, it's, you don't generally just destroy things outright. Uh, mm -hmm. unless they're woefully under level for you anyways, and it would be more or less trivial anyways. DDO uh, has... I, I think that the culture of DDO and the expectations of DDO has, has kind of morphed into this idea that turn only works if it gets destroyed, mm -hmm. which is... I mean, that's not really what turning is supposed to do. I mean, it does that. Uh, yeah. There's ways to increase hit dice and make it easier to do and stuff like that. Uh, but the idea basically is that, y yeah, sure, turning can work pretty well in heroics, uh, and then in epics, typically, it, it really tapers off pretty quickly. And a lot of that has, comes down to hit dice, because the hit dice mechanic is still in point in DDO. So, they want to make it less binary. I know we said that there were three options, but people tend to ignore the, um, the stun option. The stun option. Because if it's stunned, it probably dies pretty quickly anyways. They're super good. Yeah. Uh, so people generally look at it as it does nothing or it destroys undead outright. Uh, and yes, there are people that have, can turn even in riding the storm out, uh, which is pretty impressive. But this is not the normal experience by any means. So they want to make it less binary. So what does that mean? So they're taking out the auto-destruction, uh, and they're adding in damage. Uh, so when you turn, the DC, it, it'll be like a normal spell. The DC will be 10, plus your charisma modifier, plus your cleric or paladin level. Cleric and paladin level. It adds them together. Yes. I guess that would be true. Um, so you're getting a save. It, that's, and that's pretty good. I mean, you're talking... The, the base save before your Crimson modif Modifier is going to be 30 at uh, mm -hmm. at level 20. So, uh, And I'm not sure if Epic Destiny's the core, like the Divine Sphere would actually increase that. It might, uh, but I'm not sure. Mm. I don't think Cause, it does. Because they increase your Cleric spell level, caster level, mm. so probably not. In it any case, uh, you can get it up there pretty good. Plus your Crimson Modifier, which, I mean... You, that does not. You can get a plus twenty charisma modifier not too difficultly, right? So that's a plus fifty. That's a fifty DC right there. So yeehaw. Uh, on a failed save, they take damage, uh, and they get stunned. Uh, is and then if they save, it's half damage and no stun, which is actually really good uh, mm -hmm. in terms of. Uh, I mean, I think in, in it's going to be more. My reaction to this is it's going to be more useful because it's doing damage. It's not binary. Uh, the The stun is going to be more useful and more likely to happen. Um, I'm hoping it still it would this would actually be able to affect 
like red name skeletons. I don't know that it will, but it'd be kind of nice if it did. Um, but it should affect like orange names, at least, right? Mm -hmm. Or presume, which in certain scenarios, you know, they might be immune to being destroyed outright, anyways. But they won't be immune to the stun, so that'll be nice. Um, there's no hit dice restrictions anymore. Uh, items and enhancements that uh, that did do that, that dealt with hit dice restrictions, uh, are going to either increase the DC or damage, uh, something like that. Uh, and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, pushback on this just because they're taking away the, the destroying undead outright, which we'll talk about. There mm -hmm. is still a way that you can do that, and we'll talk about that when we talk about domains. Uh, but I think it's a win, personally. Oh, absolutely. I 100% I agree. There is, at, by taking away the ability to destroy undead, it does, or like from the base effect, um, I think that does, um, it, it, so, uh, sorry. Uh, clear, it allows uh, yeah. them to do, to make it more powerful. Yes. It, wait, can you, Whoa. does turn undead actually destroy undead? Turn undead does, if you're high enough. But again, you have to be you have to be like five hit dice over it still or something. Like there's a you can't just necessarily destroy undead. You have to be able to have and there's ways to get a pretty decently high hit dice requirement on that. But it's making it, it basically what they're doing is they're taking out the hit die formula. They're making it a, a standard DC formula that basically every other similar ability uses in the game. Uh, so it makes it really easy to understand. Instead of it being an outright destruction, you do damage. Uh, yes. Um, but like, like to me, it basically you take an effect that almost nobody uses, and if you accidentally do tap turn undead, your first thought isn't like, or if you even if you tap turn undead, your first thought isn't, man, I'm going to turn these undead. It's usually like, oh crap, why is it still in my skill bar? And you take it off. Um, but it makes it so that for paladins, it gives you an effect that will be able to uh, deal damage and be and cause stuns and really be that anti-undead specter, which generally paladins aren't, when you think of them when you compare them to cleric. Um, and then clerics as well, um, you know, they get just get a useful ability that allows them, again, to do more stuns, be more defensive, um, and also just get that extra bit of damage, especially considering the damage. All skills with uh, your, I believe it's positive energy spell power? I think it's, ra I think it's the damage. damage, so it'll be radiance, but... Well, if it's if they follow through with what they did for like positive energy bursts and stuff like that with the damage to undead, it should scale up positive. I don't know. I I didn't write down the. I, I was taking notes while listening to the video. So, and again, this yeah. is so far out that it's not. We'll get more details and we'll we'll talk about this again on the show. I'm yeah, sure. we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's turns. So. Uh, there's. Um, <laughs> as it stands right now, if you could. It, it's pretty hard and a lot and a really big investment to get to the point where you can actually destroy and turn stuff. Uh, so I think it'll be much more useful. And again, there is a way uh, in one of the domains that you can get the ability to destroy undead instead mm -hmm. of stunning them, which I think is if that's the way you want to go, it's going to be way more effective because you're going to have a much higher, there's no hit die restrictions. You're yep. going to have a much higher DC uh, in how that, uh, and now there's a DC, which there wasn't before, but you don't have to deal with the hit die restriction, which is, is pretty limiting and, and hard to get around. Yes, you can do it. And the DC is going to be a lot higher because all those items that used to give bonus to turning and blah, 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 instead of the uh -huh. hit die, it's going to give flat DCs. It seems to me the DC already scales really hard with both straight level and also uh, your charisma modifier. Focusing on charisma will make it a very, very viable thing. Yes. Uh, have, now we can talk about domains, uh, which, again, really early. Look, I, you can see where some of this stuff is going to change, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, here you go. The, so, uh, the turn on dead stuff. If the saving throw has failed, it's one d four plus four positive energy damage per cleric and energy. paladin level, uh, mm -hmm. which is a lot. Uh, the stun would be for 10 seconds. Uh, this this would actually kind of make me, because it's everything is cleric and paladin level, it makes me wonder if you can make like a hybrid cleric, paladin, definitely. hunter of the dead. Oh, that would be very there, cool. When we start talking about domains, you'll probably see some areas where you can get some, some really interesting 
multi-classing stuff going on, which is great. Uh, mm-hmm. It seems like every time they they touch a class pretty heavily, they they do lots of. We should also mention there there are more changes to clerk coming, which will probably touch favored soul because they share a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so there there are there is some they are looking at doing some other changes. It's not the only thing they're doing to clerics. Uh, nope. What they're saying. Uh, okay, domains. I don't want to go through this word for word. We'll link in the show notes. Uh, someone basically grabbed screenshots of the video and and threw them up uh, so you can look at all that stuff. Uh, the basics of what's going on, uh, you pick a domain at level 2. It's a free feat. Uh, things that it does, you can get more DCs. Uh, you can make it so you can turn elementals or animals, which is kind of neat. Uh, and mm-hmm. there's a bunch of SLAs. Uh, yeah. To give those super quick cliffs notes, but depending on which domain you take, um, once you take a level two, it just gives you some kind of flat bonus, depending on the actual what it gives you. That um, scales with car- yeah. cleric levels. Everything everything scales, which is really, really nice. So the more cleric you are, the better it is. Um, if it's a domain regarding an element, then you can your light spell power and the spell power of that element become interchangeable. So light gives you fire spell power, and fire gives spell power gives you light spell power, or lightning, or acid, or whatever element you pick. Um, also, if it's an elemental domain, you can... Or, sorry, uh... Sorry, a lot of the elemental domains, or a lot of the domains let you turn undead on things that aren't just strictly undead, which is nice. Um, or your turn undead grants gets super powered, so maybe your turn undead heals, or your turn undead adds a buff, or your turn undead, um, you know, does something. And then at levels 5, 9, and 14, as Cleric, um, you get either a spell like ability or a buff that fits the domain. Um, so, you know, if it's a, a lightning domain like air, you know, you're picking up like lightning spells as spell like abilities, as well as the ability to turn uh, elementals and stuff um, and getting lightning spell power equal to your light spell power, which is pretty neat and interesting. Um, but then you also you get things that, that, that affect yeah, your turn undead. Yes. So. Um, so I'll go through quickly and give kind of. A cliffs over. So again, it's not going to be everything, but um, air domain, light and lightning, and electric spell power become interchangeable. Uh, air is probably pretty popular because you can you get plus one to evocation spell DCs at two, six, twelve, and eighteen. Um, you get featherfall, psychonic blast, and chain lightning as spell like abilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, animal domain gives you spot, listen, and reflex. Uh, plus one to spot and listen and reflex saving throws every two levels. Uh, you can turn animals. Uh, turn on dead. The party gains points of constitution equal to half your cleric level for 20 seconds. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, the animal domain is madness. Th- this is this is where you can look at it and it's like, this is going to change. Uh, level 5, you gain 20 hit points per cleric level. You also add twice your cleric level to your hit points for each epic level you gained. Mm-hmm. That's so, 20 hit what, points for every heroic level, and f- if you're level 40 20, for every epic. If yeah. you're level 20 cleric, that's like 800 hit points. So it's 600, but yeah, it's is that crazy? Yeah, pick that domain, get 600 extra hit points. It's that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. That's it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff going on, but it's really cool. Yeah. Um, See, the thing is, a lot of it seems really, really overpowered, and when you look through the tree, but Bear in mind, it kind of is. So, it's you can not only, a bad thing. And you can only get one of these, these sets yeah. too, right? Um, you also get, animal. you get Snow Slide as an SLA, which is pretty, pretty Which awesome. is just cool. Yeah. Uh, Chaos is, gives will saves. Uh, <laughs> when you use Turn on Dead, your party gains 1d20 points of uh, universal spell power and 1d10 of it rolled separately for melee range, PR, or melee and range power and PR and MR. Yep. Very chaotic. Um, you also get Chaos Hammer, uh, some Critical Spell Chance, uh, 3%, and Prismatic Spray as SLAs. Uh, death, you get plus 1. At level 2, 6, 12, and 18, you get plus 1 to your DC of Necromancy spells. Uh, Turn Undead does twice the normal amount of damage. At Undead, that failure saving throw are destroyed. So if you really want to go the Turn Undead route, here you go. You also get yep. Death Ward. At level 5... Level five, mm-hmm. you get Death Ward as a spell-like ability. Yep. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> That's four levels early, right? Is Death Ward a fifth-level spell? <laughs> it's, no, it's a fourth-level spell, so it's two fourth, levels early. Okay. But 
it's going to cost probably less mana. Yeah. So And, which is really, really nice, it doesn't take up a spell slot. And that level 4 spell slot's really good. Freedom of movement, you got your cure, um, you know, uh, I actually, mass, lose, uh, I actually lose Death Ward once I get Mass Death Ward out of there, so you can grab something else. Yeah. Um, so you, get ne- you also get Necrotic Ray and Destruction as SLAs. Uh, mm-hmm. Destruction Domain, you get Melee and Range Power uh, at 2, 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. Oh, the coolest um, thing. <laughs> this one, that was, you can cast your Cleric Spells while Raging. <laughs> I love it. You can cast your Spells while Raging. So it's like, why would you, you want to do that? Well, what if you played Barbarian Cleric? <laughs> cleric. They're just, they're just, you know that there's just somebody sitting in the office just being like, man, wh- what about Barbarian Cleric? And everyone just looks at them. And they're like, guys, we have like 20 domains. Let's make a Barbarian Cleric domain. <laughs> and everyone just looks at each other. They just shrug their shoulders and put it in the game. You also get an extra extra plus W uh, level 9, so that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Earth is uh, like like air. You get uh, light and acid. Spell power interchangeable. You can turn on dead or turn elementals. Um, you get Plus two acid spell power per cleric level, so you can, uh, if you want to really jack up your uh, your light damage, this might be a good way to go if you want to go for acid instead. Um, <laughs> you get Melf's Acid Arrow, Stone Skin, and Earthquake as spell-like abilities. Earthquake spell-like ability at level 14. Oh, God, that's before Druid. Which is, which is actually kind of torquing a lot of people off. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are very and, upset about this. Which I, I we should mention in pen and pa- at least in three five pen and paper and domains they they do actually get earthquake as a domain spell. It's yeah. not a departure. Um, so that I think that that one might be a popular one just because you can get earthquake. Uh, the rest of the stuff is is not as great as some of the other ones, but getting earthquake is pretty nice. It's kind of weird because you get acid spell power, which sounds like really cool. But the only acid spell that clerics would get would be the Melf's acid arrow spell like ability, and they have no other acid effects. So, I'm hoping at some point there'll be like maybe new spells to go along with that one. But and like Earth Domain seems like other than earthquake, it really, really gives you nothing. Yeah, but I mean earthquake's pretty dang good. But earthquake, it's earthquake, right? Like. Uh, fire domain does a lot of the same things uh, as Earth. The spell-like abilities are Scorching Ray, Wildfire, and Firestorm. Uh, good domain is plus two light spell power per cleric level, and plus one to the heal skill every two cleric levels. So that's not terrible. Uh, Turn Undead gives you temporary hit points equal to five times your cleric level for 20 seconds. Uh, you get Deific Vengeance. Uh, let's see, Blade Bridge level six spell. Nine. Yeah, it's level 6 spell, but you get a spell-like nine. ability at 9. Yeah. This one's going to be a bit crazy, because Bladeberry is obviously the best, but it's kind of mana-intensive, which is why most see favorite souls doing the kind of DPS thing. Because you want to cast a maximized empowered quick into Blade Barrier, it's going to cost you almost 70 mana, which is very hard to do on a cleric. But, but now it'll probably cost ability. like 15. Yeah, now it'll cost like 15. You can just yeah. like throw them everywhere. Healing Domain is plus 2 positive spell power uh, per cleric level. Uh, Turn of Dead gives healing... Uh, application, uh, you get Cure Moderate Wounds pan- and Panacea as spell-like abilities. Uh, and level 14, your healing spells get free quickens. Which is actually amazing. I'm very excited for this. I it's think free. that healing domain with all the other stuff you clerics can do will make them unparalleled healers. Uh, knowledge is going to be a pretty popular one. Uh, plus two to all skills. That's kind of neat. It's just uh, neat. It doesn't scale, but you get plus two to all skills. Uh, you, your turn on dead... Uh, when you turn undead, your party gains points of intelligence equal to half your cleric level. So your wizard might ask you to turn undead a lot if they're doing a lot of DC casting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're playing with a wizard, maybe you've got like a mechanic rogue in your party, and you've got an artificer who's using one of them cool rune arms we talked about. Yeah. <sighs> uh, you get suggestion and feeble mind as spell abilities, which is kind of mad. But level 14, and this will be pretty popular, uh, you gain half your cleric, or cleric level as spell penetration. You gain plus one of the DC of all spells. This increases to up to plus three at cleric level 20. So plus three, if you're look level 20 cleric, plus three to all your DCs and, and uh, ten spell penetration. Ten spell penetration, which is not as high as you can get with like the air one, which gives you plus uh, was it four to evocation, but it's one less and plus ten spell power. So that's pretty awesome. Well, spend pe- spell penetration. Uh, yeah, sorry, spell penetration. I don't, wow. which is pretty much just greater command, I think is the only good cleric spell for this crowd control. Still, though, well, really implosion, good. Implosion has has to do spell penetration. Oh, uh, does it? Yes. 
Oh man, that's rad. This is gonna be like Implosion City. Knowledge will be a very popular one for just for that one ability of spell penetration and DCs. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Law, you get. <laughs> this will be interesting to see if if we see some uh, um, ranger hybrids here. Uh, law domain plus one to these two enchantment spells, uh, DCs at two, six, twelve, and eighteen. Uh, you get uh, you can get points of wisdom with your turn on deads, uh, mm -hmm. equal to half your cleric level for twenty seconds. Uh, orders wrath greater command at, at spell like abilities. Uh, luck is uh, plus one to all your saving throws at uh, two two six twelve eighteen. Uh, turn on dead gives you uh, divine bonus to saving throws. Get displacement at level five. You get a displacement spell like ability. That's pretty good. Um, at level nine, you add one d eight to the DCs of your spells, each rolled separately. <laughs> so each time you cast a spell, you get a one d eight to the DCs, which is which is just cool. I love it. It's just it's this just could great. actually be pretty popular. Um, it's it's higher higher average DC than the knowledge. You're just not getting the spell penetration. Uh, yeah. Level fourteen, if you're killed, you miraculously survive, gaining fifty percent of your maximum hit points. Cannot occur yeah. one, more than once per five minutes. That's I was actually awesome. yeah. I was thinking just with a law domain there with the enchantment, man. The first thought that goes to mind is like, oh, uh, arcane archer cleric. So you skip the ranger, and then you go like enchanter cleric. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, magic domain. You get plus one DC to evocation spells. Uh, total plus four. Uh, you get chain missiles in SLA. You gain bonus spell points equal to your character level times ten. Which is very good. That's 300 spell points at level 30. Mm -hmm. uh, you gain bonus points of universal spell power equal to twice your cleric level. Yeehaw. You also gain that when you turn undead. So yeah, that's your. That's like what an extra 80 universal spell power. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, protection. You get some PR and MR and AC. Eh. Uh, Night shield is an SLA. Uh, which. I don't think you really need this lane, but uh, Radiant Force Field is this lane. That's kind of nice. It's kind of neat. Uh, armor class and PRR increased by your cleric level. Uh, strength domain, plus two strength. You become immune to strength damage. That's kind of funny. Uh, it can be useful. That's kind of funny. Uh, Turn Undead gives you a your party gains divine bonus to your strength. Half your mm -hmm. cleric level, so that's kind of nice. Uh, <laughs> reflex save based on your strength instead of dexterity. It's kind of interesting. Um, you become immune to knockdown effects, uh, and you always make your saving throw against stun effects. So there's some stun there. immunity is super good. Yeah. Uh, sun domain, you gain plus two uh, fire and light spell power per cleric level. Um, when you use turn undead, a flame strike comes down at your location. I I want to know if that's cosmetic or if it actually does damage. But I, even I'm if it's just cosmetic, a, that would still be very cool. I'm assuming it's a spell. Maybe it does some extra damage. Uh, you gain searing light, flame strike, and sunburst as SLAs. Uh, trickery, uh, enchantment, uh, spell DCs at, at two, four, or two, six, twelve, and eighteen. Uh, you gain invisibility as an SLA, mind fog as an SLA, and charm monster mass as an SLA. That could be kind of fun. Uh, war, you gain plus one to damage with melee and ranged weapons uh, at two, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and twenty. Uh, Turn undead gives a divine bonus to melee and range power equal to half your cleric level for twenty seconds. You gain proficiency in all martial and exotic weapons. Oh, it's all exotic, eh? That's interesting. All exotic weapons. Have fun there. Uh, your one-handed weapons have a base damage die of 1d10. <laughs> your, this is level 9. Your one-handed weapons have base damage of 1d10, and your two-handed weapons have a base damage of 2d8. So it will not reduce the base damage if it is higher. Uh, and 14, you gain Holy Sword as an SLA. Your tactical DCs are increased by half of your cleric level. That makes me want to make some kind of goofy light pick swashbuckler. Right. We're doing a D10 <laughs> instead of a D4. There's there's some possibilities here. Um, water domain, you gain water breathing and plus one to swimming and plus two cold spell power per level. Yeah, okay. swim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And water breathing, yay. Uh, cold and... Uh, this one's weird. This one says positive and cold are interchangeable as opposed to light damage, which is kind of interesting. Well, it's it's you know, you gotta think of like the water is healing, right? I guess. 
Um, you also get Solid Fog, Cone of Cold, and Greater Keeping Cold as spell like abilities. There you go. So there's a somewhat thorough, well, not everything, but a pretty good rundown of what's going on there. Um, yeah, I think this is all great. Uh, see, there's some in the chat room I'll, I'll catch up on here. Uh, if you serve the Lord of Blaze, can you turn constructs? Uh, that's not one of the actual domains. Uh, there's, yeah, there's no uh, construction thing. domain. Uh, Wizard Man says they don't know how turn undead items and cleric blast life will affect the proposed version. Uh, as it stands, it looks like the damage will be essentially identical to Radiant Burst. Uh, so turn undead seems a lot more powerful at level. Uh, mostly in the proposal, it looks like the new turn undead will be helpful at higher and reaper against bosses if you can damage right into that. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. um, so, he also says the best thing you can do for turn undead is keep it as is, but scale it to epics better. I mean, I kind of think it essentially is. Now, granted, I, I understand if you want to keep it as is and have it destroy undead, you have to take the death domain. Yeah, so then you also get cool new powers, but you're not giving, DC spells. you're not giving anything up to take death yeah. domain. Yeah. That you, let me rephrase that. You're not giving anything up that you currently have to take the death domain. So Also, also, also this is really important. You can actually still destroy undead. Yes. There's an effect in the there's an enhancement tree probably no one's ever used before called Radiant Servant, and on tier two there's Mighty Turning, which is undead that you successfully turn are instead destroyed. So if they do fail their save, you will still destroy them, even if we you aren't dead. We should see how that how that if that changes. Or yeah. Not. Um, but yeah, even if that even if that changes, you know you you can still destroy. You can probably destroy more undead because you don't have to worry about the hit die restrictions, mm -hmm. which is pretty limiting. Uh, it does damage, which is not doing right now. You can take death domain to to make it destroy undead. You're not giving anything up that you have right now to do that because it's a new thing, uh, which increases some other things as well. Like you get plus DCs and destruction as a spell like ability. I mean, there's there's good things in there. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I, I don't know. I only see this as a win, personally. Now, having said that, that also comes from someone who has never really successfully built a turner. So, yeah. my turn undeads I've, have never done anything that at level. I used my turn D, turn on dead on DVs back in the day. Yeah, I mean, I use it for <laughs> healing stuff, but I don't actually ever turn things. And I think paladins, just in general. Like, turn's actually going to be useful for something, yep. right? Well, paladins, paladins couldn't, really. Yeah. His turn was based off cleric level. <laughs> so Paladin had turn undead, but their ability to turn was based off cleric level. So yeah, it was it, always the base. Well, yeah. I think it's a win. Uh, Wizardman says he thinks there's a, a loss in heroics. Uh, which we'll have to see how it turns out. Maybe. Um, Again, I mean, I'd... part of the part of the problem with this calculation is you're dealing with hit dice. So, are you like it's hard to say what the hit, actual hit dice of the monsters are. Uh, so I'm not sure this, that goes. Um, in any case, I, I think the number, the percentage of population that uses turn undead, even in heroics, is pretty low. So, mm -hmm. and only after some investment in doing so. There we go. Anything else you want to say before we uh, cruise through the rest of the stuff here? I just I'm very excited to see cool stuff. It's just a bunch of cool toys now, and it's going to be a very interesting to see how what goes forward and the very cool builds people come up with. Yeah, uh, and I understand druids might be a little torqued that clerics are going to get earthquake. Uh, I tend to see more clerics than I see druids these days, uh, mm -hmm. but. Druid's day will come. We hope. Oh, their day will come. <laughs> Just wait until they get that third enhancement tree. Oh, yeah. you can, so much better than whatever happened to the clerics. Uh, bonus days. Uh, for Through today, uh, you can get plus 50% on Guild Renown. Uh, store stuff. Uh, the Dress to Kill sale, 20% off of Mirrors of Glamouring. Bypass timers, cosmetic outfits, hats, and helmets through June 8th. The weekly code uh, gets you Bigby's Orange Guiding Hands times 5 with the coupon code GRABBY. They keep changing the uh, the color on these freebies, so they don't stack for me. 
<laughs> of course, I could like actually use them. I right? say you could just use them to la to lead people. Yeah. Shot great for adventure areas. <laughs> There's a thought. Uh, community news. Uh, the 237th Chronicle of the Week. Uh, community spotlight. Uh, the Munchkin Summer Games uh, have begun. That's on Kyber. Uh, Mr. Shrimptown, you got a shout out for becoming an affiliate. Congratulations. Yeah, that was actually my first uh, community highlight spot or spotlight shout out. So I'm very happy with that. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, the guild for the week: Wolfsbane Clan is level 110 guild on Kyber with seasoned players. We'll work together for flagging and gear. The guild is all, also open to new players. Find them in game uh, for a family friendly guild. Uh, comment for the week: What new difficulty level needs to be implemented in DDO? Hmm. Well. We have Reaper mode, which is pretty challenging. I'm going with Hardcore. Uh, if you die, you're automatically kicked out of the dungeon. Oh, I was going to say, if you die, your character gets deleted. It's a little too Hardcore, but... Mm, hardcore. Either one uh, of those would work. I mean, Hardcore, you die and your character gets deleted, or you die and you're booted from the dungeon. That one's not such a not such a bad thing. I think that's, that's actually okay. Um... I know, realistically, the next area I'd like to see difficulty examined would be potentially with um, adventure zones and cana or, and the challenges. Um, the adventure zones in general, the epic ones, because they scale, can be very difficult if you're in a 12-man raid and you're by yourself. That can definitely be very challenging. But in most cases, you kind of just wander around and fight stuff and there's nothing to do. It would be cool to see like very high-difficulty adventure areas. Um, and then all, on top of that, I'd love to see, uh, you know, Reaper mode challenges. Or maybe not specifically Reaper mode, but high difficulty challenges as well. Can you see more challenges? I kind of yeah, like challenges. Yeah, more challenges cool. I, I love the can of challenges. Okay? So, devs, if you're listening, here's your punch list. We want more challenges. More challenges. More quivers. More rune more arms. <laughs> yeah. And make the rune arms and the quivers come from the challenges. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, fan site news. Uh, Dito Cast got we got a shout out for our our very lengthy show last week about mm -hmm. needing a guild. <laughs> I think our our discussion was an hour and forty minutes, like the roundtable parts. So. Uh, apologies. Uh, the producer should have realized that that needed to be two shows. Uh, let's see, Dito Players News uh, has dinosaurs in their new show. Damsel DDO uh, went black and blue in their latest show. Uh, Axel has thoughts about possible. Early turn on dead change in a new video. Uh, so you, uh, he shared two videos, uh, one about the turn on dead changes and one about domains, which we'll link to. Uh, the Order of Eclectica uh, takes out the quarterstaff, uh, even though it played a barbarian raised by orcs. Uh, and Enrique slays and lives to write about it. Uh, and of course, there's the video that uh, Cordovan and, and Linabel uh, did where they talked about some of the changes. Uh, Pretty similar to what we just went, we did, but uh, Cordova went through things a lot more thoroughly than I did. Uh, other stuff going on in the community. Uh, Mickey's Lydium had uh, week thirty in the blog. Uh, let's see, Didocast news. Uh, Dido, there's no Didocast plat this week, or at least I won't be hosting it. Uh, they might do something, and but I'm not positive. Uh, but I will be out for the next two weeks for Didocast plat. Uh, but we'll be coming back. Uh, we're up to almost a full party, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm almost done with my busy season, so I'll be uh, less likely to uh, to not be able to do the Echo Splat. Uh, and that will take us to Lightning Post, which there wasn't uh, weren't any comments this week, uh, at least not that I saw. Uh, but we have a uh, go for a question here. Um, this came from Rapinia. Uh, I probably said the wrong. Rapinina, uh, Rapinina, something like that. On Kenneth, my apologies for butchering your name. Uh, how do you make the fastest character? What is the maximum? Uh, so I'm going to link to uh, a post from the Measurement Guild uh, on movement speed. Uh, I think this is a couple years old now, but it will will still give you some uh, some good good numbers. Um, Run speed is is kind of additive in in the boosts. Um, the game uses the metric system. Uh, the starting speed of all classes is 25 kilometers per hour. 
Although I I recognize it's it's pretty hard to actually figure out what a kilometer is in the in this game. Um, there's not exactly a measuring stick. Um, but this gives you a breakdown of a lot of different ways that you can get uh, movement speed. It doesn't include the I don't think it includes the uh, bard bonus. It may I'm not exactly sure uh, where this landed in the timeline. Uh, but it gives you a good, a pretty good rundown of of what you can do in terms of speed. Um, the at the time of this, the highest speed was a monk and ranger uh, combination. So you could use uh, just like the monk base speed was pretty fast, but then you could use a ranger boost uh, to really get moving. Mm -hmm. um, some people might might quickly say, but you can get. Uh, Movement speed, movement burst speed from barbarians too, uh, but barbarians can't be lawful, and monks have to be lawful. So you unfortunately can't really do that. It'd be fun if you could. Monk barbarian. It'd be fun. Um, so, in any case, uh, so we'll link that as well. Um, you can get some some pretty good bursty stuff going on with uh, some stuff as well, but. Although I, I suspect probably the 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 fastest you could um, like do as a bursting speed might be a a, a monk possibly be like a monk druid with snow slide. But do you have any uh, anything you want to add on in terms of of movement speed? Well, I'm looking at this chart here. It's a very interesting read. What I will say is that I'm not sure what the difference is between the fastest movement speeds, looking at the difference between pure monk, the monk ranger, that sort of thing, and seeing what they can do. But what I can tell you is it's a huge difference between that and the lowest speeds. Uh, get speed items, everybody. You'll notice your, you'll enjoy your experience a lot better when you actually have like a speed item. It's like playing a monk. After you play a monk and you go to another class, you feel like you just went from like driving like a Ferrari down the road to like now you're just walking <laughs> because of how much slower it is. Sure. Yeah, movement speed's nice. That's for sure. Um, I didn't go back to it earlier from our chat room, but someone was, did mention that uh, they they did lose tomes from reincarnation. Um, I have had, and I know some people have lost tomes. It, it happens a little bit more frequently than the inventory loss thing, uh, but that seems to be slightly different in that uh, it's pretty easy to to fix that. I've also had all of my epic destiny XP or like the the, um, each individual destiny XP wiped out uh, a couple of times. Okay. Uh, but in in those specific cases, submitting a ticket, the, like the first time I lost all my epic destinies, it, it took a little while to get resolved. Um, but by the time it happened to me a second time, uh, basically I, I took like a third of the time. Like they'd really refined the, the, the... And what ended up happening is they, they gave me all the, the XP back um, because they have to grant me had to grant me XP. Uh, sadly, my level twenty character uh, went all the way from level twenty to to cap in in being granted all of my epic destiny XP back. So I got free. Oh no! I know it was tragic. Oh god! A full so reincarnation terrible. for free? Oh man! Uh, uh, and then you reincarnate and lose all your XP again. <laughs> no. I was actually thinking, man, how did I do that? Can I do that again? That'd be really a really slick way of getting <laughs> getting some past life. Um, although the downside was I, I didn't have any <laughs> I didn't have didn't recoup I I didn't make any accommodations about it so I didn't have any hearts didn't get any mm. heart seeds back. But um, and they and I I know people have have gotten supreme tone like they they can get the tomes back. The thing that they're dealing with right now is is a little bit harder because it it like deletes the character information, so they can't. They can't. The customer service can't. The game masters can't look at what you had before, which is the problem. But all right, uh, with that, uh, let's close out the show here. Uh, do you want to plug your uh, stream a little bit? Uh, yeah. So I'm. I just got approved as a Twitch affiliate, which is cool. So if you want to follow me. Uh, on twitch.tv slash streamtime, which I'm going to link in the chat here as I'm talking. Um, but as fortunately, I'm actually unable to stream pretty much this entire week um, due to the fact that I'm going to be out of town for work. Uh, but I will be back next week with some cool stuff there. Um, so you, if you want to check out what I do, I also write some guides to that sort of thing. So 
Uh, and as always, it's always an honor to be on here. So I want to thank Pat for inviting me on the on the stream here, uh, on the on the, or on the podcast. Um, it's always a good time. I love talking about pretty much anything DDO, and as well, some of the reaction from you guys is really cool. So, yeah, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks to us, here's the folks in the chat room. Uh, I had a little bit of a lively chat here, chiming in on some of the turn on this stuff, and that's that's great. Uh, thanks also to all the other uh, contributors for DDO Cast, and thanks Shrimp Tom for being on the show today. Uh, talking for an hour and 45 minutes about stuff. See, I told you, it was a shorter show. Um, it was a shorter <laughs> show. We only had, because there was, like, we had to talk about all four quivers. <laughs> Break up the two-hour <laughs> march. Uh, thanks also to Standing Stone Games uh, for making DDO and for supporting DDO Cast uh, on occasion, and thanks also to Wizards of the Coast uh, for letting them make DDO. Uh, and thanks also to Cyberators for hosting the podcast. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can visit our website, ddocast.com. Uh, you can also support us on Patreon. Uh, if you'd like to do a recurring gift. Uh, all that money goes to prizes, uh, so I'm not pocketing any money or anything like that. Uh, if you'd like to hit us up at ddocast.com for show notes, MP3s, our calendar, previous shows, swag, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to be a part of the show or you just want to say hi, uh, you want to comment on what we've been talking about, uh, you know, or a question you'd like to hear us answer, maybe something you'd like to hear us debate on one of our debate shows, just leave us a comment or you can email us at ddocast at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to get your voice heard about uh, the cleric changes, uh, you're welcome to share them with us on the comments, uh, and we'd be happy to share them on the show. Uh, but if you want to put that in front of the devs, do it on the forums uh, mm -hmm. in their the the threads that they've got going, that uh, like the official discussion threads and stuff like that. That's that's where if you want to get your voice heard for the devs, you want to do that. Yeah. Uh, I would be happy to get comments and, and thoughts on this. Uh, I think it's a it's a big change and it's worthy of discussion. So I'd be happy to be uh, talking about and looking at what people have to say about it and having that on the show. But just know that that may not go in front of the depths. So, yep. Leave your comments and uh, let us know what you think, because uh, we're always interested for more discussion. But don't just scream into the void. Also, put it to the words of the right people. And be nice. And be nice. Uh, at least respectful. Uh, so that we'll get to our closing tip here. Uh, it comes from Jada on Organesson. Teamwork will always be the easiest way to get through quests. So until next time, may all your attack rolls be crits, all your chests level appropriate. Have fun, and don't forget to gather for buffs. Mm -hmm.